Hello, today we'll be looking at taking the Runcam Open IPC thing out for a fly and I've mounted it in this quad. It was kind of tricky and difficult to mount in a quad. I didn't do much videoing of what the bits were that was going wrong, but I did a little bit. Take a look at it here. Well, we've got somewhat of a mess on the floor. What's going on here? Well, I had this installed in here and it didn't work, basically. And I found two issues. I found that this connector could be a little bit dodgy, so I went and soldered on directly. I'm running it from here, which produces a 10 volt output here. But I noticed the fan could go and didn't quite seem to work. Um, and when I tried logging in the system, it would shut itself down and sort of say uh, connection reset and that sort of thing. I thought that's weird. So. I'm running it directly from this 4S battery and it's a lot happier. We've got a picture. Where's my camera? There it is. Hello. And um, yeah, although it says it works on 9 to 30 volts, it's not quite the case, it seems, in my opinion. The, um, the 10 volt power supply I'm getting, perhaps it doesn't put out enough like amps to do it or something, but it, it doesn't seem to work. So I'm going to have to think of something else for this quad before I go ahead and finish the install. But as you can see, I eventually got it in and it works on a quad where you've got a space behind the main stack to get it in place. Uh, it, as far as the power goes, I'm taking a 6S directly from the, the battery and powering it that way, which is fine. So yeah, that's what it looks like. But just before we go and actually fly this, a quick word about our sponsor today, which once again is PCBWay. PCBWay, as its name suggests, can prototype and assemble PCBs for you. If you design your own PCBs, then you probably know this already. Now, I don't have much of a clue about PCB design, but with open source hardware becoming more of a thing, you'll often be able to get a Gerber file for a project which contains the PCB design. Send this to PCBWay to get your own PCBs made without needing to know anything about the design process. But it's not just PCBs. CNC machining, laser cutting, sheet metal bending, 3D printing and injection molding are just some of the extra things they can do and in materials that are way out of reach for most hobbyists. So if you want to have a look at having them make something for you, check them out at pcbway.com. And now, on with the video. Well, hello, we're in the field, and we're here to try out the Runcam version of uh, Open IPC, which has been stuffed in here, and it's been a little bit uh, hit and miss, this one, because I found that it's very sensitive to having things placed between the boards, essentially. This was working when I left it. I couldn't get telemetry going on this version of Betaflight. I'll be recording into the tablet using the, the actual uh, Wi-Fi adapter they sent. But in order to view this through the goggles, because this has a, it's not a very fast tablet, it's quite slow at decoding it. If I put a USB hub on it, my latencies will go up and up and up. So I'm using my original MVR board here, which ironically has the Emacs um, Wi-Fi adapter and you haven't seen the Emacs stuff yet because I haven't talked about it in the review yet but I'm also testing out at the same day so I'm trying two open IPC quads out um, let's let's hope they work <laughs> see what happens shall we so yeah I'm gonna power up and uh, let, let us see I'm just gonna go for a fly around and see what happens basically so it's armed Air mode is on. Okay. What do I think of this so far? Well, this seems all right so far, I have to admit. Feels absolutely normal right now. Why am I leaning over there? That's weird. So yeah, this is a... Uh, not really detecting what I'd call much latency or any. And this is possibly mostly to do with the fact that, you know, I don't fly um, super quick or super, you know, flippity floppities and stuff. The most disturbing thing is I've got a full OSD that's completely blank, so I'm going to have to sort of figure out how long I've been going for and see how it feels. I mean, I am taking it quite easy at the moment, and that's kind of on purpose, because I need to know how the VTX will respond um, and how the quad will respond. At the moment, it feels 
feels really good. Now I have to tell you, of course, that I'm using this through the NVR and, and that means I've got better latency than using it on the uh, tablet. Uh, it would be better still using the, I forgot what it's called now, that little single board computer thing, which name escapes me. Let's see how the picture looks when I go through here. It's getting a little bit scrabbly at the sides there, going through things. But you know, this is, <laughs> this is just like flying a regular quad. It's quite reminiscent of flying walks now, to be perfectly honest. Um, yeah, this is going 720p 60. So to get the best latency on the tablet, it would be 720p at 120. The reason it's not at 120 is because the NVR can only handle 60 frames a second. So, you know, we, we'll stay at 60 frames a second. The the real pain in the bar for me is I don't know what my battery is and I don't know how long I've been flying. Uh, can't work it out by the amount of packets that's been sent, but no, this has been powered on a while longer. But yeah, this, this is feeling really good, actually. I should do a countdown on my uh, watch or something. This is it. This is. I'm so terrified about running out of bloody battery at this point. That would really ruin my day. So I'll do one more little lap and then I'll come in. But right now, it just breaks up a little bit there. It's it's looking it's looking good. I'm staying in the field for a very specific reason. Of course, if we have a problem, but um, oh, we just got a, a lock up there and I'm right in the wrong place. Oof. So we just got a bit of a frame hang for about half a second, but my goodness, that's as frightening as you like when that happens. So let's put it into not air mode and see if we can land this thing. You notice I've got my camera quite down again on purpose, so I can. I'm not going too fast all the time. I've got a, a good handle on what's going on, but yeah, right now I'm not really having a problem in terms of latency and stuff like that. Christ, it's the water being kicked up there, can't you? Whoop. <laughs> Landed. A little bit wet, but I think it's okay. So I wanted to give you my sort of live uh, initial feedback there in the first flight, but while this second flight plays back, I'll, I'll explain a little bit more about actually what we're seeing. And one of the interesting things is I'm recording this on a tablet using screen recording, and I'm using the RunCam Wi-Fi adapter for it, as I mentioned before. And what I found in this, when I looked at it, I thought, well, this is not what I'm seeing in the goggles. The NVR board is, is feeding me a nice smooth 60 frames per second. When I had a look at the frame rate I was getting from the tablet, it was only giving 45 point something frames per second, which is interesting and is possibly down to my tablet. You'll also notice, and it was quite evident in the previous flight, that there are a few bits of the video where it appeared to hang for sort of half a second or more, or go a bit weird. In the goggles, I didn't see this. Aside from the one bit where I mentioned about it suddenly, ooh, ooh, it's going dodgy, um, it just didn't happen. And I put this again down to the, the slow tablet. To put it in perspective, if you look at the top left corner, you can see that this tablet decoded a frame in around 50 something milliseconds. I found people with an up-to-date fast phone are telling me they're getting about a nine millisecond decode, which is gonna give a much better experience. The fact I'm also using screen recording as well isn't doing it any favours, it's just stressing it out more and more. I can't be 100% that's responsible for the tablet not being as good, but it, it seems reasonable because I've also used the Runcam wireless USB adapter in my NVR to fly with and that was silky smooth once again. Now the lack of OSD is a pain. You see I've arranged some bits on the screen anyway, but it's not there. Uh, and that was quite hard to determine when I needed to land. OpenIPC relies on Mavlink telemetry being sent from the flight controller to the UART port in the camera to produce an OSD. And Betaflight seems a bit hit and miss about actually sending it. In 4.5 it's broken, but I have had it work on earlier versions of Betaflight. I'm not too worried about this, as for next time I intend to try the MSP OSD option, which is now available, and I'll, I'll go through how to do that. Uh, this will use DisplayPort in a similar way to GGI or Walksnail, with the difference being that the camera encodes this itself rather than the ground station overlaying it. But that's for next time, so let's talk about this flight. 
it does actually feel really nice to fly. I expected to feel a lot of latency, but in reality it was much more difficult to detect. That said, my brain is quite good to adapting at how the sticks feel, but if I really concentrated and thought about it, I would describe it as having a quad which feels a little loose on the sticks, not locked in as it could be, and maybe just like a little delay when it, it you sort of come out of a, using the stick or just a little bit slow to start up. That's what I mean by loose. Th that said, I found it really simple to adapt to and I was happy flying around trees and getting down low. Range-wise, I took more of a look in my last LiPo and I went to the ends of each of the neighbouring fields. Now, this isn't any more than 500 metres, but within that, I didn't seem to get any degradation in picture. And remember, my receiving antenna for the video is less than 12 inches off the ground. It's just sat on top of my bag, which is not ideal. Uh, but yeah, that seemed to work really well. I was really impressed with how the whole thing worked and the sharpness of the picture, which looked really good. So there's a few things missing from the start of the video, I should say. I should say that if you want to know more about what the board looks like and how it's set up, check out the first video and there's a link here. There's also been an update on the software used on the tablet. Previously, I used a package called FPV View. This has since been discontinued, but has now been forked off as Pixel Pilot, which you can find under the OpenIPC's GitHub repository. So as far as the flying experience goes, from the point of view of how it looks and feels, I'm really impressed. It was much better than I expected. I'm just sorry I couldn't show you my experience I had in the goggles. And this is where the hole is in OpenIPC right now. We have now an easy way of hooking things up, but it's still not particularly convenient. And what I mean by that is, if you just had a phone or a tablet, flying through that would be tricky. Can you just imagine the reflections from the sun? And using a USB-C hub to HDMI out to your goggles is not particularly easy or practical. With the NVR board I was using, people have mounted these to goggles and certainly the Redaxa has been mounted. The Redaxa has a reasonable way of recording DVR as well. You can use a switch and hook it up to a few pins. The NVR can record to a USB stick, but it relies on detecting that the quad's been armed, which is a problem with the telemetry not working right now. Of course, the way forward is a more convenient and simple goggle module that easily mounts on goggles and has built-in DVR recording. I've no doubt that this is coming, and right now I don't want to buy Redaxa as a DVR and VRX. I'd prefer to wait for a module to come along. So in conclusion, it's quite a pain to get into a quad. It doesn't mount as such, but this is really still a prototype product. Runcam are testing the waters with this, and hopefully we'll see more refined VTX camera solutions coming. As I mentioned, for the next flight of this, I'll be looking at getting the uh, MSP OSD working so I can actually see what's happening in the quad and I might even get the, the voltage, which would be handy. But before that, I'll also be showing you the Emacs OpenIPC products. So keep an eye out for that video. In the meantime, many thanks to Runcam for sending me out their product to look at. And of course, you can find links to it in the description below. I hope that review has been helpful and I'll see you next video. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.